Hey guys, Hayden here again from Alarm Systems Store, and today we're going to be learning about partitioning. Um, I've had quite a few requests about this video, and I just have not had time to do it, so we're doing it now. Um, and essentially, this is just going to be partitioning on a DSC Neo. Um, I don't have enough equipment to set up multiple partitions, but we're going to set up two. Uh, that's why I have two keypads here. Um, we're going to basically, I have everything currently set up just on partition one. Um, so both of these keypads are set up for partition one and our zones one and two. These two little door contacts are for zone one, are for partition one as well. So, all we're going to do now is I'm going to jump into the programming and I'm going to show you how to set up an additional partition and how to assign different devices to those partitions. So, I will say right off the bat, if you're thinking about partitioning your system, a touch screen is a huge help in this regard. Um, the touch screen itself has functionality to allow it to interact with any partition, even if it's assigned to a specific one. Button keypads like this one on my right, this can only be tied to a specific partition, or it can be set up as a global keypad. And global keypads in this form are a bit confusing. Um, essentially, it gives you a whole new screen, a whole new layout you have to go through, and until you get used to that, it's, it's very awkward. So um, I will cover that later on, but for right now, um, basically just know that my recommendation for partitioned systems is to use at least one touch screen so you have access to all partitions from that touch screen. So real quick before we jump more deep into this, I want to explain what partitioning is for those of you that are still in the learning process. So essentially, um, as I mentioned earlier, everything we have here is assigned to partition one. And that is the default partition that every alarm system is gonna use. It just picks out the first one and everything you add, whether it be zones, keypads, expanders, whatever, it's all going to attach to partition one. <clears throat> What you can do though, however, is separate those out using the same main board for the system. So up here I have the actual cabinet for all these devices and that one main board can be used to create multiple mini systems basically. You can have up to eight partitions total, uh, which is quite a few. I've never seen a system that big before, but it is doable. Um, essentially, you're just going to have one or two partitions. Uh, usually, let's say it's a residential application. You have a house. The house is partition one. You have a pole barn. Pole barn's partition two. Those systems are going to act, act completely independently of each other. And that is because what we're doing is telling the system to segregate those devices. And here in a second, I'm going to get into the programming and explain how that's done. But just keep in mind that if you're new and you're learning about like the DSC Neo or learning about alarm systems in general, unless you have a secondary building that you can tie to your one main panel, Partitioning is not for you. So just keep that in mind as we progress through this video. Most people are not gonna have to worry about this, but those that do, it can be quite a complicated process if you don't understand what you're doing. So we're here today so I can teach you how to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. So real quick before um, I do too much programming, I wanna give you a rundown of what the system looks like now and what you would normally see. Um, keypad over here. It's just got a check mark. If we scroll, system's ready to arm. That's all it says. If we open up one of these zones, let's say it's zone one, the keypad is gonna say secure system before arming and it's gonna show me zone one's open. Over here, if we do the same thing, it's gonna show secure system and show zone two. Now, on the touch screen, you can use this zone status menu here and it's a little bit more handy. The problem is that it does show the additional zones even if they don't exist. Uh, but that's really the only downside. Um, so here we have zone one. You can see the check mark there. If I remove the magnet, check mark changes to an open door. That means the zone is open. Close it, gives a check mark back. Do it with this one. Got an open door there. 
zone two shows the open door. It actually moves zone two up to the top so that you can see what's open as you close them. If you're going around, you know, getting the system ready to arm at night or something. So this is what it looks like when everything is tied to the same partition. Now, I'm gonna go into programming on this keypad here and we're going to assign this keypad and zone two here to partition two. So to do so, we're gonna go in to programming, star eight, five, 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 five. Then we're gonna go to section 200. So type in 200. That is partition masking. Now, if we hit star where it says part mask one through eight, it is going to pop up and say partition one, yes. That means partition one is turned on. Now, if we scroll through, partition two is no, partition three is no, partition four, no, etc. That means that all the other partitions on this system are turned off. So to enable one, we have to change this value to a yes. So change to partition two, hit star to change the N to a Y. Now, what we just did, we just turned on partition two. That just tells the system that we are going to be adding things to a secondary partition. To add more devices to it, however, you need to go into another section, which is going to be sections 201 through 208. So, if we go back to 201, 201 is partition one zone mask. So, what that means is using this menu, we can assign certain zones to partition one. Now, we don't need to do that right this second because everything's already on partition one. So we're gonna go to partition two zone mask. Now hit star. It's gonna ask to zone mask one through eight. This is just talking about zones one through eight, zones nine through 16, 17 through 24, etc. We only have two zones, so we're gonna go into where we can find zone two, which is gonna be one through eight. Scroll over to zone two, and you'll see it's a no. Change that to a yes. Now what we just did is we enabled zone two on partition two. However, that doesn't keep it from working with partition one as well. So if we go back two steps, go back to where it says partition two zone mask, scroll back to the left. If we go into partition one zone mask into section one through eight and scroll over to zone two, you can see zone two is still set to yes for partition one. Now, this is where partitioning gets really confusing because you can have zones that are tied to multiple partitions. However, if you do that, it means that to be able to arm either of those partitions, this door has to be closed. So, generally with partitioning, you want everything as separated as possible and that way it makes it easier for you now if you can imagine a scenario where it would be beneficial to have a sensor that is tied to both partitions you are more than welcome to do so essentially you just enable it on both partitions that you wanted to act on um, the point of this video though is to show you how to segregate them and how to assign zones and stuff like that so we are going to be completely separating our system so what we need to do is in the partition one zone mask where we're at, we need to turn zone two off. Now, if we just back all the way out, not touching anything else, it's gonna say system is ready to arm. Now, since both these keypads are still on partition one, if I remove the magnet from zone two, it doesn't take away our green check mark. It doesn't say a zone's open, even over here, we still don't have an open zone because partition one that these keypads are assigned to is not looking at zone two right now. Partition one completely ignores zone two. The only partition that is looking at that zone is partition two. So to be able to interact with partition two, we need to assign a keypad to it, allowing that keypad to interact with partition two. Now. This is where I'm going to show you the benefits of using a touchscreen with partitioning. So if we go over to the touchscreen, like I said, zone two is not interfering with it currently. 
But if we click on the options button, click on partition status, and now you do have to enter your master code. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four by default. Now, as you can see, partition one is ready to arm, partition two is not. And that is because I moved this magnet just a second ago. But what I can do, if I put it back, it changes partition two to ready to arm. So this is a huge benefit when partitioning systems because this touch screen, as you can see, it has access to all eight available partitions. So from your touch screen, you'll be able to arm and disarm any partition you want. So definitely recommend touch screen if possible. If not, we'll go over how to use a global keypad here in a few. So what I'm gonna do now though, however, is assign this keypad here to partition two, and that way it acts completely independently of everything on this side of the screen. So to do that, we have to go into keypad programming. And for keypad programming, we have to know what keypad slot each keypad is assigned to. If you're not sure what slot number your keypads are assigned to, we can go into our programming. We can go into section 902. And we can, we can scroll over to edit module slot. So if we click star on that, as you can see, it gives me the name of the keypad. This is an HS2 LCD RF. That's this one. If I scroll to the right, HS2 TCHP, that is this one. So right now, the touch screen is set in keypad slot two, and the HS2 button keypad is assigned to slot one. So that is gonna help you determine what section you need to enter for your keypad programming. Now, if we back up to where we get the module enrollment, uh, solid red lock and select 902, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in 860 plus the number of the keypad. So we're trying to adjust this one. So that's gonna be 861 because this keypad is in slot one. So. Type in 861, keypad partition mask. So right off the bat, it gives you the option to change the partition of this keypad. So it'll be section 000, as you can see there, hit star. And right now you can see it's assigned to partition one. If we scroll left, it changes it to a global keypad. If we scroll back to the right, it allows you to select any of the other partitions. So for right now, I'm going to assign it to partition two. So what we've done so far is we have enabled partition two, we assigned zone two to our second partition, and we assigned our keypad here to partition two as well. Those are the only steps that are required to partition a system. There's nothing else that I need to do to assign partitions for these keypads or zones. So now, if I open up zone two, it is going to show up on this keypad that it is an open zone. On the touch screen, however, it's still showing no zone two. It's not even looking for it. So at this point, our system is completely partitioned. This is one system and this is another system. Now, if I go to arm this, the only thing it's going to arm is zone two here. So now I'm gonna arm both partitions and we'll see how all that works. So I will be right back. All right, I'm back. So as you can see, I have touchscreen armed, I have partition one armed. It does say up there at the top, partition one armed. And over here, this one is armed as well. It's got the red lock. And it doesn't say partition armed because it doesn't read partitions like this one does. So it just says system armed in away mode. So now, as you'll see, when I open this door contact up here for zone two, only partition two is going to react. This keypad and the zone are gonna stay armed and there's not gonna be any problems. But if I choose that one, open that one, as you can see, system is in alarm, zone two is the problem. So let me go ahead and disarm this. I'll go ahead and disarm this one as well. Now, there's a couple other things that we can do to kind of fine tune our partitions. So one of them is going to be delay times for each partition. The other one is going to be user codes for partitions. So we're gonna keep programming over here just because it's a little bit quicker. Um, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into section 005 for system times. Now, by default, I'm sure you've already seen this section if you're setting up your own system, but you probably set the times for partition one already. So we don't need to mess with that one, but there is a section for each individual partition where you can set up delay times. So if we want to change the entry and exit delays for partition two, you'll scroll over to where it says partition two and set up additional uh, delay times. Now they can be the same as partition one, that's not a problem, or you can make them separate, whatever works for you. Uh, but that is just one way you can kind of fine tune your partition and that way, you know, it does act completely independently. Now, another thing we can do is set up user codes so that they only work on each individual partition. Now your master code, keep in mind, master code is gonna cover all the system. Doesn't matter what partition you're on, that code is gonna work for arming and disarming no matter what. But if we use the star five menu and create a secondary user code, so let me do that real quick. User one is the master code, obviously. User two is free because it has this dash. So let's say I make it two, make it two, 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 two. So now we have a secondary user code. But after we create the code, we can scroll over. You can make a label for it if you want. Um, but the third option is gonna be partition assignment. So if we hit star on that, right now this user code can be used on partition one and it can be used on partition two. But if we turn off partition one, now that user code can only be used with partition two. Like I said, the master code is still gonna be universal for the system, but that 2222 code can only be used with partition two. And now that is essentially all you'll ever need to do for partitioning. Now, if you're gonna have a third or fourth partition, you know, if you're gonna have multiple mini systems, um, like I said, you're just gonna follow those instructions. You're just going to relate it to partition two or partition three respectively. So you need to enable the zone on the new partition, remove it from the old partition. You need to assign the keypad to the partition you wanna use it with and then from there, it's just fine tuning it. That is, includes user codes and delay times. Once it's fine tuned, you're done. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wanna show what this keypad does when it's in global mode. So real quick, I'm gonna go back into programming. I'm gonna set it up for a global keypad. So we go to 861, go into partition masking, set it up as a global keypad. And just back all the way out now all right so and now that I have this set up for a global keypad I let it settle for a minute so it can get back to its what it would normally show after sitting for a moment uh, but as you can see it's just date and time but if we press any button like the pound button for example it's gonna ask you to enter your access code and that's gonna be your master code so just type in one two three four and what pops up is 1R and 2R. And that is actually referring to the partitions. It's saying partition one is ready and partition two is ready. So if we remove the zone two magnet, it's going to change two to an N. That means partition two is in for not ready. If we replace it, it'll change back to an R. Now that right there is a perfect example of another annoying little feature of global keypads. They time out very quickly. So. If you're learning global keypads and you're trying to get used to it, you're probably going to have to enter your master code quite a few times. But if we do so, and let's say we want to arm one of our partitions, as long as we have the R, it means they are ready to arm. All we have to do to arm them is either press the one button to arm partition one, or you can alternately scroll through and arm each individual partition. And there's also an option to arm all partitions. So that part's kind of neat. Uh, it's just a little awkward getting used to this. But let's say we hit one. We just want to arm partition one right now from a global keypad. If we hit one, as you can see, partition one over here started arming. Now, I'm going to go ahead and disarm this real quick. 
as I'm sure you saw over here, partition one had an X underneath it. And if you ever see that, that means partition one is counting down its exit delay. Now, if we had let it finish arming, it would have popped up and said 1A for armed. If you want to enter like programming or any of your menus while in a global keypad setup, um, you just do so before you enter the access code. So for example, if I just hit star here, it pops up and brings up a menu of all the star menus. So if we just hit star eight, for example, it brings you to where you would enter your programming. If you hit star two, it's gonna pop up with your trouble menu. Now, if you had entered your access code before doing that, the star button just gives you a long beep, which just means that was an incorrect entry. So that is another one of those little caveats, because you're going to get really used to entering your master code every time you want to access the keypad, but then when you go to get into programming or something, it typically messes people up because they get to this part, and then they try to hit the star button, and it doesn't do anything for them. So... Just keep that in mind. Um, now, if you by chance happen to set a keypad as global and you want to change it back, all you have to do is get into your programming. So hit the pound button a bunch of times until you get back to this screen. Now hit star eight, enter your installer code, and then you can go back into the keypad programming and change it back to a specific partition. So that's gonna be for this keypad, 861, Keep that partition mask, scroll back over to partition two, and set it, and then just back all the way out. And as you can see, it went back to its normal system is ready to arm. If we open up the zone, it's not gonna, it's gonna show the zone for us. Um, and that is basically the worst part of global keypads is if you just have this as a global keypad, it is very difficult to tell what zones you have open and which ones you do not, because it doesn't scroll across the screen and say, hey, partition two has this zone open, this zone open, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say any of that. So you have to very heartily keep track of all your zones, make sure you know what's going on, know what's closed, what's not. And that way, you know, if for whatever reason partition two is not ready to arm, you know what's open and you can close it. Now, I will say in general, most systems, people are gonna have a good idea of what sensors are uh, on their system. But, you know, if you have a very large system, it gets hard to keep track of all that. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much it for partitioning. Um, there's nothing else I can really say about uh, partitioning an alarm system. Um, I mean, we could go into shared partitions and stuff like that, but basically, I kind of went over that earlier. You can have zones that are tied to multiple partitions. Now, I don't recommend doing that because it just causes more confusion on top of the already confusing setup of partitions, but this is your system. You do it however you wish. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Um, I don't want to confuse you guys with too much more information, but I hope this was informative enough. I hope it gave you what you need to be able to partition your own system. If you guys could, please like and subscribe. It helps so much just get our word out there to people, let them know that they can do this stuff on their own if they want to. Um, I personally will never understand paying $50 to $100 in monitoring fees every month or paying hundreds of dollars every time you need a battery and one of your sensors changed. Um, that whole process just seems like a money dump to me and the more we as a company and you guys as do-it-yourselfers can help inform people that they can be in control of their own home security and do this kind of stuff on their own. It helps us exponentially because our entire gig is just giving people the tools that they need to do their own home security. And we hope that, you know, through these videos and through all the content that we have on our website, alarmsystemstore.com, that you guys can find everything you need to do your own alarm system and set it up and program it the whole bit. Um, so if you guys could, like I said, like and subscribe, it gets our word out there. It puts our YouTube channel in other people's feeds and we can help them save tons of money on alarm system costs. So 
Uh, yeah, if you have anything to say, by all means, leave a comment. Um, we like to read those comments. Of course, there's always going to be those people that just complain to complain or don't like something, you know. Can't make everybody happy, but hopefully these videos are informative enough that you understand what I am trying to talk about in them. I want to be able to give you guys the knowledge to be able to do this on your own. I'm not here to tell you what to do or specifically how to do it. I just am giving you the information and the tools you need to succeed. So um, everything you guys leave for us, likes, comments, whatever, it helps so much. So leave those down below and I will catch you guys on the next one.